to Sunday for security reasons on the advice of the police. A very visible presence, both inside and outside the ground, on the streets of the city. A big day for Roger Freestone, his 500th Football League appearance, and this one started with a frantic first five minutes. His opposite member, Willie Gouray, almost caught out by David Romo's free kick, the goalkeeper from Guadeloupe, with a big leap in the end to turn the ball for a corner. No more trouble from the set piece that followed as well. Not looking at all like top of the table against third from bottom on a sticky pitch on a very windy day. The London is soon making chances at the other end though. Neil Harris beating Roger Freestone only for Lee Jenkins to head off the line. And then Freestone turned the struggle with the corner that came afterwards. The Swans relieved to see Tim Cahill's header fly across the six yard box and away. The Wall did find the net just before half time. That one disallowed but a fairly obvious foul on Freestone in spite of the highest claims of a clean jump. The Swans is turned to go close next, a deflected Stuart Robert shot dipping just over the crossbar. The supporters did see a goal at half time. So the Swans beating the Wolves and Stamper the Lion in a penalty shootout. Suitably inspired, Swansea found the net six minutes after the break. Christian Maleri forcing the ball over the line after a misplaced punch from the away. Only for that one to be disallowed as well. Apparently for handball against Matthias de Chave, challenging just in front of the keeper. The Frenchman certainly going in with his arm up. It's difficult to see what contact he actually made, although the noble protest did seem immediate. Referee Dow did stop the game briefly after that, but the police moved in quickly to quell any possibility of trouble, starting in the corner where the two sets of rival supporters stood closest together. And everybody was watching the action once again when Damien Lacey forced Gervais into another fine save. Yesterday, the Pools panel decided this one would count as an away win, but the Swans certainly did their best to make that look rather silly. They should have scored when Rome was crossed, found the Chave unmarked in front of goal. Not the way that would have been to start his spell on loan at the Vetch. No more did finish the stronger of the two teams. Christophe Kine, their own fan from French football, not too far away with a free kick. And then Richard Savia bringing one stop from Roger Freestone before Stuart Roberts blocked from Neil Harris and the keeper there again to deny Mark Bertram. That the last real opportunity either side had to take all three points and entirely fitting that Roger Freestone should make two late important saves to crown that 500th appearance with a clean sheet. Not the win Swansea really needed, the draw against the league leaders definitely no more than they deserved. It's always going to be a tough game. Two massive crowds as well. They brought a big crowd and so did we. The occasion was there and uh, I was very pleased with our out the way we worked. If we can say anything with a bit of little criticism, it could be a bit, a little bit more confident on the board. But uh, having had the luck that we've had just recently where we've lost goals last minute and super goals, overall I thought it was a terrific performance. They're not top of the league because they're lucky. Uh, they're top of the league because they've put lots of good performances together, hard to beat. And uh, I think we possibly had the best move of the game. Whether it was the easiest chance of the game, I don't know. In the position we're at the moment, it's a point game because uh, when you're playing the top of the league, uh, they're all, always capable of creating something. The more, the more we perform as we did today, uh, I, think, uh, I think we've got a much better chance of uh, pushing up the league. Yeah, it's a hard-earned point for Swansea, and they needed something from that game as well. Because all the teams around them, except Oxford, managed to take something from their games yesterday. So the Swans still third from bottom on 24 points, three short of Port Vale, were just about that relegation zone. As for Exeter, no change there either. In spite of their heavy defeat yesterday, they stayed 14th.